Good afternoon. It's Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Today is Friday the 13th and the market is closed. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, uh, market action here. The NASDAQ 100 Trust, or I'm looking at the screen right now, it says Power Shares QQQ Trust. I don't know when they changed the name of it. This is the first time I've noticed it. Um, anyways, the Qs did close with a gain today uh, of 11 cents, about a quarter percent, after a little bit of a shakeout again uh, today, like we saw yesterday and the day before. So this market, they keep trying to knock it back, but the buyers do come back in and take control. So on this daily time frame, you see that we've got a very uh, constructive pattern here. We've got the market making higher highs and higher lows, and we've also got the uh, rising moving averages. We've got the 10 above the 20, which is above the 50, and they're all advancing. So it's a nice, healthy, uptrending market. Um, it, it might break little trend lines once in a while, but a lot of times those little trend line breaks do nothing more than bring in more short sellers and get rid of the nervous long. So the market is looking strong. It looks like it's heading for at least uh, the, the close of uh, closing gap level, about 45.10 or so, 45.05. I think it's probably going to go on to make new highs. If it doesn't, though, um, I'll have stops in place, so it won't really matter. Let's take a look at the weekly time frame. You can see in here that uh, it gapped higher. Kind of, We sold off a little bit. It then closed near the uh, high for the week. So, again, it's uh, all in all, I'd say very constructive action. You could look in here at this uh, half-hour time frame and maybe call this an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And if so, well, it looks like we broke the neckline here at 4460. To come up with a bullish objective, we would take the height of that pattern, which measures uh, at, the, at the neck, at the head rather, 44, up to $44.60. So we would add 60 cents to that 44.60 and come up with a target of $45.20, which would put us just short of all-time high, or not all-time highs, but uh, highs of the last uh, few years. That put us right around here would be 45.20. So, uh, you know, that's just one way of looking at the market. That's not a call. Uh, but I think the market does have the potential to do it. You look at this five-minute, or I'm sorry, 10-minute chart, we've got a very bullish pattern in here. We had a nice little shakeout on uh, middle of the week, a recovery. And, you know, I kind of thought we would uh, go more neutral than this today, but the buyers are showing that they are anxious in here. And we saw it with, with big volume here. So, uh, again, very constructive action. The S&P 500, the spiders, SPY, they still call that the same thing, I guess. Um, this market was up 57 cents, or 0.4%, 0.39, actually. Uh, but this market is, is clearly a little bit stronger. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's made a higher high than uh, a corresponding high would be with the uh, NASDAQ 100. And it's also come up and nearly, uh, you could say, it's closed this gap. So it's closed right at the high end of that range. Let's see what that closing day was right here, just for those uh, people who think that stuff's important. 45.17 uh, was the close on this day before the gap. So you can say that this gap has officially been closed, and uh, we're 7 cents above the close on that day uh, where the market gap lower. So again, it's just uh, pointing towards more bullish action. We get a little bit of a shakeout. Uh, early on, got some people nervous, but look at where it found support, right at that rising five-day moving average, like it often does. So looking at the 30-minute time frame here, the market's a little extended, but, uh, you know, so what? It's still going higher, and the only thing that matters is price. The volume was lower today, so what? The price was higher. That's what pays us. That's what you need to pay attention to, and it's looking like this market is uh, ready to, to break the new highs. The highest close that it's made looks like it was on this day. Um, it closed at 4604. This day it closed at, yeah. So 14604 was the uh, the high close for uh, the you know last couple of years. So we're, I mean, we're just 78, uh, 70, you know, 82 cents away from, from a new high in here. If you're looking at this thing and thinking the market's weak, I don't know what you're looking at. Try doing a handstand um, because you're looking at it upside down. And uh, let's see, the semiconductors, they, they, they continue to look like they're acting kind of, you know, they're, they're setting up bullishly in here, consolidating above that 50-day moving average, but still in the middle of the range. And uh, I'm going to point again to another inverted cup, uh, inverted head and shoulders here on the hourly time frame. So that'll be worth noting that uh, it was interesting. We saw a double bottom in here. It broke this trend line, cleared that. That's where the buyers took control uh, earlier in the week. Now it looks like we're building this right-hand shoulder and maybe a break past the 
uh, $34.80 area or so next week could lead to a move that would bring us up. I think I said the 36.30 was the uh, measurement of that move. So right up to the top end of that range, and maybe that'd be the catalyst this time that we would, would have knocked on this resistance enough times that the buyers take control and send the semiconductors into a bull market. We'll see. I mean, you got to look at stocks like Intel and see what's going on there. Looks like Intel might be coming into resistance. Uh, I looked at AMAT earlier today. AMAT's looking pretty bullish, uh, but you know, on the weekly time frame, it's just kind of does nothing. So uh, let's get back to the market. IWM, the uh, uh, Russell 2000, did make it above the $81 level. So that's the level we've been looking at for it to make it above. So that's on its way higher as well. Uh, closing the gap will take us up to about 81.75 or so. So that's about 40 cents away from closing that gap. And uh, once again, it just continues to act very bullish. Another higher high in here today. Close right near the high end of that range, and uh, I see it trading a little bit higher after the close as well. So market acts good. Um, you know, we, we tried, uh, I think, only maybe one short this week and did end up getting stopped out of that one, but uh, we're in an uptrend. STKL, this is Suntopia, or Suntopa, whatever it's called. Low in here today was $12.17. Now, I said yesterday we were going to use a wider-than-normal stop with this one. Uh, and that our stop was going to be at 1215. So that looked like the right place for it. We'll keep the stop there. Hopefully that'll be uh, good enough to keep us in for next week as well on STKL. Because as I mentioned, this stock has a huge short position in it. And uh, if, if, if those shorts kind of panic, then maybe we can get something going here on the upside that could be pretty powerful. ISE uh, did finally you know, run past our target, but this is why you got to trade these things. We got involved yesterday at 49.85. I said, where's your stop to 50.20? And uh, we were stopped out with a 35 cent gain, but uh, this is a, you know, three days in a row, it was a really good trading stock, especially for when you consider the fact that it's a listed stock. Uh, BLUD, we were looking to get involved in Immucor above $33.70. Uh, it gapped up too high for me to really say you should have taken advantage of this. It gapped up to $34 a share. So I don't think there, if, you, if you did get involved in it, I'd say put your stop below today's low. Um, but I'm not going to take credit for that play. eBay, um, I said you want to buy that above $34.07. Uh, one of you did get involved pre-market at $34.07. So, $34 so I know at least one person did. So I'm going to say at this point, um, even though he sold his position, if you're involved in the stock, Raise your stop to $33.45 at this point. And then finally, we had ICGE. ICGE did not give us a reason to buy. We wanted to purchase it above $11.75. Let's take a look at Dendrion for a minute because this stock has been interesting. It's gotten a lot of press because of the, um, you know, the, the huge short squeeze uh, in there. There's a very big short position. Now, the, if you take a look at since the stock gapped higher, that's March 30th, and what we can do is we can use a, a volume weighted average price is what I'm going to do is draw a line straight across. And you can see that the, pe the, the line is right now at about $14 a share. As I'm dragging this pencil to the right, you're going to see that number change. It's the average price that the stock trades at at that certain time. So you can see when it broke past the VWAP right, uh, um, right past that level right there, it really took off and the, the volume weighted average price acted as support on this pullback at first on the 11th. And now, when you look at it, since this gap where it's traded all these shares, the average person, the average transaction has actually occurred at about $18.30 a share. So it means that even though the, it's getting a lot of publicity as a short squeeze, there's a lot of people who have bought this stock long. The majority of the longs are down on average a dollar in here. Now, I know that's not the case for everyone, obviously, but it just shows the danger of buying these stocks that are in a downtrend. You look at today's action, in today's da the daily VWAP, volume-weighted average price, the average price the stock traded at. Well, yesterday, first of all, we saw the stock go below the, the daily VWAP uh, end of the day. And then today, the sellers remained in control the whole day long. This means that the average price the stock traded at today was about $17.95. And the people who were trying to buy it and pick a bottom were, were obviously wrong as the stock just continued to move lower in here. So the, the VWAP, volume weighted average price, is a very good tool. It's something that uh, a lot of times a stock will act as, re, you know, it, it will act as resistance. And uh, 
Uh, so something worth looking at if you have that in your tools.